So this is right after we dealt with the doctor. <sighs> there he is. Johnny Clean is talking with Cherry Bomb and Mrs. Kubota when you woke up. We were just talking about you. And the Emerald City Ripper. Ironic that you tracked a serial killer to a mental hospital. Johnny Clean told us you were where you were going, Ome. We have been waiting for you to return. I thought you... Uh, I don't like these dialogue options. I want to be nice to them. I thought you knew better than that, Johnny. Yeah, let's go with that one. The other one seemed a little bit rude. You're right. I should have kept my mouth shut. I should know better. It's just that we have a personal stake in the Reaper murders. We each have our reasons for wanting the killer found. Sam was a regular here and his loss has been felt regardless of his shortcomings. The whole sprawl has been shaken by these killings as well. The randomness of them. No one knows if they will be next or what the killer might take from them. I admit that the killings have hampered business as well. I'm sorry, but it is true. It does not help that Sam's body was found down the street from here. Even my regular customers have been loath to venture out with a killer on the loose. Now tell us, Omei, did you find the person responsible for the Reaper murders? The person responsible, no. The killer, yes. I don't understand. Are you saying the killer wasn't responsible for his own actions? It sounds more complicated than I suspected. Hmm... It is. The head of the asylum was killing specific people to harvest specific body parts. All of the transplanted organs came from the same donor, Melinda Watts, Sam's mother. It looked like he was putting her back together. The three are silent as the news sinks in. So Sam had an organ transplanted from his mother, and then the Ripper killed Sam and all those other people just to reassemble Sam's mother. Looks like it. I sense a cause and effect in this. Coyote and Jake Armitage just left here to attend Sam's funeral. I'm told there will be a reinterment ceremony for his mother as well. His sister invited me to the funeral and the reinterment when I met her here. Think his sister Jessica had something to do with it? Hang on, I saw Sam's sister when she was here the other day. She was as a corp as they come, but I can't imagine a lady like that behind a series of murders. There's got to be something else going on. It is clear that you must go to the funeral and talk with Jessica Watts. And I need to pay my respects to Sam. Of course. Mrs. Kubota raises her hand and the conversation stops. Wait, before you go... <coughs> <clears throat> there is one thing you did not tell us. Where is the Emerald City Reaper now? Well, he isn't in heaven, I'm sure of that. Hi, that is good. Plan your next move. Ah, oh, go to the Watts funeral. Hmm... before we do this. <coughs> Good morning, Lurus. Before we do that, let's see what Mr. Clue has to say. Well, welcome back. Good, good to be back, Mr. Clue. What's the latest news? I feel like I should be asking you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for checking. 
Word around here was that you were closing in on the Ripper when he last left. Dare I ask how that went? Sam's killer has met his end. Sam would be grateful, I'm sure. And yet your shoulders are no more relaxed. And you still survey the room like a man who has yet to return from war. This isn't over, is it? The Ripper may have been killing on someone else's orders. The big guy sighs. I was hoping this would soon be all behind us. The Baron's has a short memory, but for wounds such as these, it makes an exception. To see this prolonged, I fear for how it may forever change the landscape. Gangs have already started to take advantage of the chaos left in the Ripper's wake, and that only serves to destabilize what semblance of order there was, paving the way for the Megacorp corpse to take land grabs and push poor Sinless further to the fringes where the dangers are greatest. Sooner or later, even the Union could be threatened. Good thing the Union's got you then. Good thing we've got each other. Take care. Okay. Let's go downstairs. <clears throat> Put on my upgraded... Decker, decking, uh, whatever you want to call it, deck. <laughs> I need to buy some more health potions, health kits, sorry. Workbench Buster currently has a mil spec shotgun, fully dis disassembled and its parts neatly arranged. He lovingly massages each piece with a microfiber cloth coated in some kind of gun oil or polish. Whatever the stuff is, it leaves the pieces shining brilliantly and pungent as hell. Got some catalogs, just come in if you might be interested in an order. I can get gear shipped overnight from the manufacturer, though I won't lie to you, you'll be paying for the convenience. Otherwise, I got plenty of the usual bang-bangs waiting for a good home, what do you say? What's the new hotness when it comes to dealing damage, Buster? Well, there are two schools of thought on the matter. There are those who swear by their smart guns and such because they make the weapon more accurate and thus more deadly. Then there are those who subscribe to the bigger boom theory, putting all their money on the biggest and baddest rounds. But you ask me, it's all situational. That's where the real advances have come. You can pack a panther assault cannon, but it won't do you no favors if you're fighting in a basement hallway. By the same token, a room sweeper might carve up your average pack of gangers up close and personal, but its range is a big limitation. Military life never taught me that. It was dealing to runners like yourself that afforded me this epiphany. You've got to be ready for anything. On that note, might I interest you in some custom mods or perhaps some specialty grenades? I'll take a look at what you've got. Uh, let's sell some stuff. Let's sell the AK. Let's sell my decking deck thing. The old one that I don't need. I'm just going to sell this armor that I bought because I don't think you can equip. Uh, your teammates with anything. Hmm. 
and I want to upgrade my uh, Yep. My skills a little bit. There we go. Let's talk to him again and buy a brand new drone. Or I oh, but first I got to sell my old one. And I can buy the Strato 9. <laughs> An old Lone Star hover drone that has been given a weapon upgrade. I'm gonna sell this nitro because I don't need it. Yeah, thank you, X5. I up. Really weird. Uh, yesterday after the stream, I tried to update my the profile picture. It's it's the same picture. I just wanted to re-upload it, and it didn't let me do it for some reason. Castle looks to be better rested and in better spirits than the last time you saw her. She's also clearly had a shower and a change of clothes, maybe even some sleep. Her eyes are sharp when they turn up from her work to greet you. Welcome back. Still in one piece, I see. More is the pity for me, but I'll still take your money. Perhaps a full physical is in order, or we can call it a medical consultation. That's where I roughly determine the odds of your survival based on your professional proclivities. It comes with a lollipop. So what will it be? Actually, I'm curious how many patients you've lost over the years. Dr. Castle sets down her work and fixes you with a hard look. Her expression normally falls on an axis of varying degrees of indifference depending on her level of tiredness, but now it has shifted over to something decidedly darker. Is this morbid curiosity? I didn't mean to upset you. It's fine, and I have no reservations about answering the question. To give you a hard number is difficult. There are many who I would have considered patients that never made it home. And so I suppose one could say they died while under my care, though not as a result of it. But the number I think you want is the number of patients who died on my table, and that number is six. Six who I was unable to save spread across a 13-year career. And I remember each and every one down to the smallest detail, including the moment where I realized I could do nothing more for them. I would argue that four of those six were beyond helping from the moment they passed through my door. The fifth died as a result of complications while installing a stolen piece of experimental cyberware, which I had cautioned against using. The sixth? Entirely my fault. I made a mistake. I can't claim I was overtired or inexperienced or distracted. I simply made the wrong decision and the young man died as a result. I'm sorry, Dr. Castle. She picks up her tablet and resumes her work. Yes. Well, will there be anything else? Um, can I see your medical supplies? I want to buy an advanced med kit. And... A Dock Wagon Gold Trauma Kit.
Let's see what cyberware he has. Oh, I can't put it in the... Oh, I already have this one. Oh, okay. I can buy another one. Okay, interesting. Whoa, look at this one. Wired reflexes with reflex trigger. Movement plus one. When triggered, you will dodge the first attack against you. Last three run rounds. But it's 5,000. Mm. I would like to get this one. The Aries Dermal Plating. Adds two armor. Let's confirm that. Wait. You cannot have less than one essence. Cyberware causes essence loss. This affects the magic rating of your character. And magic is equal to essence rounded down. Magic is very important for spellcasters. The number of spell slots available to the caster is equal to half of their magic rounded down. Therefore, losing essence can cause spell slots to be permanently lost. In addition, each point of magic lost increases all spells full down by plus one. Casting a spell again while it is cooling causes drain damage to the caster. You cannot have less than one essence. I could get that now, but I would... I would only be left with 2,500. Union. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, and I guess Mr. Delilah is not available for anything. We can't get a crew. So, what's our next objective? Go to Watts Funeral. Go to the Watts funeral. Here we go. Family debts. The sun has set nearly set when you reach Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. Its cemetery, dilapidated and overgrown, sits atop a small hill on the outskirts of the city. A somber enclave of, enclave of the dead overlooking the sprawl of the living. The Seattle rain continues unabated and lightning appears over the mountains, exposing the landscape in staccato pulses of stark flashes. You walk the gravel path to the gates of the cemetery. Up ahead, you see Coyote and Jake standing by the gravesite alongside Jessica Watts and her and another mourner, a beautiful elven woman in a six-figure outfit. Whatever Dr. Holmes was up to at Mercy Mental Hospital, the answers lie here with the re-entered uh, body of Melinda Watts, the recently deceased bo uh, body of Sam Watts, and with those attending them at the ceremony. Uh, yeah, I am good. I can't... Uh, I don't have anyone else in my party, so... Let's go. Jessica Watts. Is that the priest? 
think that's the priest and I that's the elven lady in the expensive clothing. The mourners stand graveside listening to the Catholic priest's words of prayer and solace. Jessica's face is filled with relief as the last of her family is laid to rest. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Lord, receive the souls of Sam and Melinda Watts, mother and son, to live forever by your side. Amen. Thank you, Father. I know that my mother rests easier now that she's finally in the parish cemetery. I'm sorry for the recent loss of your brother, but I'm glad that re-entering your mother's body here has brought you comfort. She loved this parish so. She opens her hands to the elf standing across from her. Thank you for coming, Glyn. Your support has meant the world to me. Now I can live again with my new family. The woman is a classic elven beauty, confident, poised, expensively dressed. Of course, I am glad this ancient ritual brings you some measure of solace. Hopefully, I hope you'll be able to put all of this behind you now. Jessica speaks to the rest of you. Thank you all for coming. I didn't realize Sam had so many friends. I appreciate your support and your friendship with Sam. I saw him out the night he died. Only fitting I see him out today. Jake Armitage. Coyote. Sam may have had his problems, but he was our friend, part of the Union family. May he rest in peace. Miss Watts, family members and friends, thank you for attending the service. I suggest we don't linger long. The cemetery isn't safe after dark. Thank you, Father. We'll be... We'll just be a moment. Miss Watts, I know this isn't the best time, but we need to talk. She's guarded, but playing polite. Very well, but let's not keep Father O'Malley. Thank you, child. Feel free to call on me as you need. The priest clutches his Bible to his chest then turns towards the neighboring church. What's happening? Oh, there we go. Father O'Malley leaves, granting you an opportunity to speak with Jessica, but it's hardly a private conversation, as the elf Lynn has chosen to stay and support her friend. As it ho so happens, Jake and Coyote have also lingered, lending you support too. Alright, what would you like to talk about? Let's start with your mother. Did you know she was an organ donor? Jessica's demeanor turns oddly cool and stony in response to such a simple question. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Then can you explain how her body parts made their way into half a dozen recipients? You don't know what you're talking about. I know Sam helped your mother save lives through that donation. Her jaw clenches. She wasn't a donor. She was a victim. A victim of my brother's greed. He took from her, desecrating her body, all to benefit himself. She never would have agreed to such a thing. Not even to save the lives of others, lives like Sam's. Cracks are starting to appear on Jessica's carefully crafted mask. Sam destroyed his own liver pursuing oblivion. That was his choice. Your mother's gift meant a second chance for Sam. It was not a gift. It was stolen. And I wasn't about to let him destroy what little remained of her with his vulgar appetites. Oh, and she hired the serial killer? What? And so you hired Holmes to get it back? Jessica's eyes burn with righteous anger. Gone are any attempts to hide her guilt. Dr. Holmes made my mother whole again. He made it possible for me to place her to rest and say goodbye. He killed Sam and a half dozen other people whose lives had been saved by your mother. She snaps. Those people were scavengers, ghouls. They deserve to die for desecrating my mother's body. And poor Sam, it was his drinking and debauchery that drove my mother to the grave, as sure as if he had murdered her to himself. My mother deserved honor and dignity. I gave her that today. She's finally whole again with a proper Catholic burial. Those ghouls who stole her organs, including Sam, have paid the price for their sins. The beautiful elf breaks in the essence of calm. Jessica, that's enough. We have business to attend to. My old family is dead, Jessica Watts. 
My old family is dead and buried where they should be. They can't taint my new family now. They can't corrupt my children. I won't go through that again. Ooh, good luck at the dentist, X5. We'll be right here. We'll be here. Jessica, we need to go now. She presses a button on her com on her com link. She Jessica Watts. She seethes at you. What happened now is on your head. If you had just walked away when I told you to, McCluskey would have eventually found Holmes, collected his lieutenant badge, and closed the case. But you had to keep digging. Now you and your friends have to die. Let their blood be on your hands. Uh oh. Boy, we're having a gunfight in the graveyard. Um, you've got a shotgun, so get up here. Okay, you, I aimed for the other one, but you shot him. Uh, switch to Jake. Have him take cover here. Oh, there's a third dude. A fourth dude. Oh, God. Brony, get over here. You overwatch this way. Jake, can you shoot from over there? Oh, here comes another dude. Oh, and another. Oh, how many of these dudes are there? We need to find out where Sam's sister might have gone. Maybe one of these guys can tell us with a little encouragement. Encouragement. Yeah. However, we're pretty freaking dead here. Oh, come on, stop missing at 81%. Oh, you've got... Uh... Hey, there we go. Oh, I should have moved him. Go to Jake because I'm uh, genuinely worried about him.
move in here. Shoot him then. There we go. Drone, why are you missing 81% shots? Oh, she's got new equipment. The good. You hear scratching coming from a crypt? I don't know how we're gonna do this. Go further back. Master Cookie Man, hello! Good luck walking the doggo! Everybody in chat, give a follow to Monster Cookie Man! Looks like we woke up the neighbors. We've got ghouls incoming? Maybe we can use this to our advantage. Okay, that one's busy fighting the ghouls. put you yeah go over here now hey GM Shamu hello everybody in chat you know what to do give a follow to our friend GM Shenmu. Thank you for the host. Ghouls coming from that side too? Uh, I'm in a really tough situation. I need to get you out of there.
Not enough ammo. And you missed that shot. Jake is dead! Stop coming after me! There's a perfectly good enemy over there! Oh my god! Oh, no, come on. Oh, I put it in the freaking path of these guys. You gotta get out of there, dude. Let's try. Let's try this. Oh, there's another one here. I didn't even notice this guy. Two more here. Oh.
Drone is gonna die. Okay, at least it hit some of uh, some of them. And you missed your shot. He's dead. Oh no, he's going <laughs> doing after her. <sighs> I lost my drone. And people are like, oh, God. People are not doing well. But hopefully we don't have any more fights right now. Interrogate the leader. As you listen to the sounds of gunfire and spellbirds fade away and the silence of the dead returns to the cemetery. The man is beyond healing. As you look down at him, you notice the quality of his suit and shoes. This isn't a runner and he's not from the street. Jessica Watts, she hired you. Where can I find her? You get nothing. He convulses and dies. We don't know each other too well, but it seems to me that you need to find a better group of, group of people to associate with. Where did those guys come from? You didn't recognize who the elf was? No, who was she? She's Lynn Telestrian, super rich and super into the Universal Brotherhood. She's a major spokesperson for them in Seattle. Hmm, Jake grabs the dead man by the throat. At first, it looks like he's trying to kill him again, and then you notice his feeling for something under his skin. Yep, he's got a Corp ID chip. You watch as Jake pulls out his modified PDA and slots the chip. Mr. Wiley here was with Eagle Security. They work for the uh, Brotherhood. That must have been Lynn Telestrian security detail we just chewed up. <coughs> Be right.
That must have been Lynn Telestrian security detail we just chewed through. If she's protecting Jessica, they'll be inside the Universal Brotherhood. If you're going to hit the Universal Brotherhood, I'm coming too. <clears throat> that psycho just admitted she had my friend Sam and a lot of innocent people killed so she could put her dead mother back together. That is totally slagged up. Plus, she and her elf body, Lynn, just tried to geek me. They're gonna hurt for that. Shoot yourself, lady. I was only stopping by to pay my respects to Sam. Merc hit squads, the Universal Brotherhood, not my scene at the moment. I can call up some of Delilah's runners if you want to go there now. Let me know what you decide. Uh, I would like to get some more he healing items. This game is really good. Throw my kids and mm. let's see. Ah, damn it. I'm heading to the Universal Brotherhood, call the runners. Oh, I still have to pay for them. they're suddenly way more expensive. I'll stop at the Union first since I'm going to have to pay for them. Interesting. Cavalier frag grenade. Jazz. What's jazz? Combat steam that increases quickness plus two action and action points plus one for five rounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's where the inspiration came from, uh, DG. This Jake, you said this Jake Armitage guy always brought to my mind a character from William Gibson's Neuromancer, former Green Ballet Colonel Willis Corto, known as Armitage to the crew from the book. Yeah, because uh, William Gibson's work was the inspiration for both the cyber, cyberpunk uh, tabletop RPG and for the Shadowrun tabletop RPG. I know, William Gibson is a pillar of the cyberpunk genre. I read Neuromancer oh, years ago. I don't remember much of it. But I remember liking it a lot. I still have the book.
Force Force for Abomination Elemental Fetish. Okay. Moving parts, you put the pieces together. Jessica Watts was reassembling her mother, Melinda, gathering her missing organs to allow Melinda a decent burial. Organ Sam sold for a quick buck after her death. The ghoul attack after the ceremony didn't appear to be part of Lynn Telestrian's attempt to get you out of Jessica's way. They were just more victims of magic. Magic's helter-skelter returned to the world. Lynn's well-armed security unit was a different animal entirely. You head back to the Union to resupply and rearm. Whatever Lynn and Jessica are involved with, it, appeared, uh, it appears to be a large operation and the trail leads to the Universal Brotherhood. Yeah, there are books. There are quite a few books, uh, Monster Cookie Mon. Um, do I have any healing items? Nope. Ah, your real name happens to be Jessica. <laughs> Okay, we're equipped now. What do I want to sell quickly? Mm, nothing worth. have better prices than need a crew yes hire a team and head for the universal brotherhood no man your dudes are really expensive but i wanted another runner That's it, we're going with three. This is going to be so difficult. I need more money. I don't have anything I can sell, though.
Yeah, we'll, we'll go with... Wait, can I save it? No, I can't. Why not? Yes, Digi, there are a lot of novels. I was looking at them when I played this game the first time years ago, and I know that there are a few, quite a few novels, I, at least I, from what I remember, starring uh, Jake Armitage. Oh, I don't know who, who the good writers are, Master and Cookie Mon. I don't know who of the guys who wrote this are, are good. Wrote... Uh, We'll go with three. Let's see. Towards the Brotherhood. It takes nearly an hour for the taxi to make its way from the squalor of the Redmond Barrens across the bridge to the Seattle waterfront and the Universal Brotherhood. The building is a pre-crash brick job with a fancy new facade that sports neon highlights and an enormous set of glass double doors. Uh, through the windows, you can see activity within... Smiling, happy disciples shuffling along in beige pajamas and slippers. A greeter stands outside the front door, gently attempting to entice the misbegotten and the curious to enter and take their first baby steps towards brotherhood. Pike Place Market is usually empty by now, but you step out of the cab to the sounds of an excited crowd. Uh... I can give you, I can give Coyote that. Whoa, there's a lot of people here. Oh, look at those drones. Maria Mercurial Fan. What is that? A be Man, she's fully augmented. This lady here is fully augmented from what it looks like. Except her head. Maria Mercurial fan. The fan is apparently excited to be in the same city as the rock star. Hey, how you doing? You here for the Maria Mercurial concert? You bet, can you get me in? I wish I could get in. They just announced this thing an hour ago, all spontaneous-like. Of course, by the time I got here, all the tickets were already gone. I'm going to try and find a better spot to hear. Uh, before we talk to the dealer... Oh, that's the Universal Brotherhood, huh? Sharian, hello. Sharian, I have a question for you. How come you've got 60 hours in uh, Shadowrun Returns? How many times have you played it? I think this is you. Sharian. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay, Sharian. I don't know. I thought it's, this is not a 60-hour game. I thought, like, how the hell do you have 60 hours in the game? 
okay so the area is pretty limited we can't do much around here uh what's this dealer have to say it wouldn't be a rock concert without a drug dealer although no police are nearby he plays the part as if his performance was part of the experience Psst. yo you like nerves maybe something stronger nerves you've been living under a rock oh may nerves is the wonder drug it'll cure whatever ails you you've got nerves no, I'm out of nerves, but I've got something else you might like. I didn't know there was a concert today. Who's playing? Maria Mercurial, the silver lady. She is the waviest. So smooth. I loved I love her chrome cyber limbs. She's kind of fallen off the radar lately, though. Looks like she's making a comeback. When does the show start? It's gonna be hours. They just started setting up a and the crowd is already forming. This is her town, so it's no surprise. Show me what you got. Ah, uh, I don't care about that stuff. I don't use I don't use drugs. Slick security guard. Oh, look at this guy. May I help you? Do you work for the Rockstar? Yes, sir. I work for Maria Mercurial. Something I can do for you? I'd like to meet Maria Mercurial. Lots of people want to meet Maria Mercurial. Uh. Show the counter on my credit stick. I'm basically, I've got under 2,000 new yen. That's not a lot of money. I have a, a song, I think, Miss Mercurial, we want to hear. Maria Mercurial writes all her own music. Can I get into the concert? That's not up to me. The concert was only announced an hour ago, but the tickets are already sold out. Sorry, nothing I can do. Know anything about the Universal Brotherhood? Just what I see on the Tridy. i I'm going to look around. Keep yourself, Shammer. I guess this is just for flavor. I don't think we actually have anything to do here. Look at this guy jamming. There's another guy with an epic beard. <laughs> Monster Cookie Man, he's out of nerves. Uh, I'm not going to save it yet. Let's talk to this guy. Welcome, brother. Are you ready to build a better tomorrow? I'm thinking about it. We totally understand. Once you hear our message, we believe you will see that there is a better way. Come in and find the power of belonging. I have some questions first. Of course, brother. Go right ahead and ask. It's a sort of drug, Monster Cookiemon. What is the Universal Brotherhood? At least that's what the game said. The game said that NERPS, NERP is a type of drug or NERPS. Uh, what is the Universal Brotherhood? The Universal Brotherhood is a community that welcomes all forms of meta-humanity with the mission of making the world a better place by helping individuals to become so much more than they currently are. It sounds like a religion. That's because it is, brother. After all, what is religion but an organized collection of beliefs that relate 
meta humanity to our spirituality. We believe that the brotherhood is the highest form of religion because it brings us closer to the truth. And what is the truth? That's what you'll find out inside. Come in and find the power of belonging. At least tell me a bit of the truth. Gladly, it's something we're happy to share. I just thought you'd prefer to hear it from someone more articulate than me. It starts with the idea that meta-humanity is good at its core and that we are all one family. But more than that, it's that we are linked to something greater than ourselves, something beyond time, something beyond flesh. And that is, you're going to have to go inside if you want to learn more. Ah, nerfs are random stuff. Basically anything ads tell you to buy. Nerfs or new exciting ah new exciting retail products. Okay. Who can who can join? Why well, anyone, of course. It wouldn't be very universal if we left anyone out, would it? Elves are especially welcome, brother. Uh do you know Jessica Watts? Of course, Grandmother Jessica is the leader of this chapter of the Universal Brotherhood. Uh-oh. She's not only a part of the Universal Brotherhood, she's the leader of the chapter. Oh. Tell me about Lynn Telestrian. Happily, Mother Lynn is our chapter's most dynamic spokesperson. She is truly an inspiration to us all. That's all for now. Great. Come in and find the power of belonging. Oh, here we go. You you hear the sound of soft music playing within and what many soft sleepers You hear the sounds of soft music playing within and what many soft sleepers gliding across a smooth floor. The text is a little weird. Um, let's not go inside yet. Uh, there's no chance for me to talk to this guy, right? Nope, that, that that was it. I thought somehow maybe we could get in and meet her. Meet uh, Maria Mercurial and get some benefit, but get some like dialogue benefit after and go in here, but no. Oh brother, I forgot to mention that everyone must enter the Brotherhood alone. <sighs> My friends and I are together. In order to become part of a larger family, we must first know ourselves. You need to hear our message in solitude so that your mind can be clear from distraction and the shackles of this heartbreakingly oppressive world. Uh-oh. Uh, we, we have to go in alone. I understand. Coyote whispers in your ear. We'll wait outside for you. I'll take the team and circle around the building looking for another way in. I'll chirp you on your comlink link if we find one. Ah, uh, got a bad feeling. The Universal Brotherhood. In contrast to the noise and energy of the crowd outside, the lobby of the Universal Brotherhood is sedate, tranquil, acquiescent. The low music piped through the room is something from a day spa mixed with a planetarium sky show, allowing listeners to achieve maximum relaxation while reaching for the stars. Brothers and sisters from every race and every branch of meta-humanity mill about with blissful smiles and shining eyes, greeting each other with head nods, palm touches, and murmured blessings. The woman at the front desk offers you a welcome smile as you enter, her hand automatically moving to her stack of religious literature. Uh oh. Welcome back, X5. Sister Sally. Sister Sally, hi! Welcome to the Universal Brotherhood. I will be with you in just a second. She turns to the other woman at the desk. Sister Monica, you have to be more careful with your ID. She reaches down to a box on the floor. Here's a blank key card. Take it and your ruin card to the brother to brother Christopher, and he will let you into the office to program a new one. Thank you, Sister Sally. Sister Sally smiles. Of course, truth makes us one.
Ooh, that's good to hear, X5. Thank Great that everything is okay. Sister Sally, the young lady turns back to you and smiles. I'm sorry about that. How can I help you today? What is the Universal Brotherhood? The Universal Brotherhood is a community that welcomes all forms of meta-humanity with the mission of making the world a better place by helping individuals to become so much more than they currently are. This is our Seattle chapter. There are more popping up every day. Is Jessica Watts here? I'm sorry, I don't know. I only see Grandmother Jessica at special ceremonies and even then only at a distance. You might ask Mother Lynn, Lynn Telestrian, if you can catch her in the auditorium. Is Lynn Telestrian here? I believe so. I think she arrived at the end of Father Willie's... Father Willie? Father Willie's talk, so you might still find her in the auditorium. Yes, X5. All should follow the monster. Why is Jessica Watts called Grandmother Jessica? But the Universal Brotherhood, we learned that the world is all one family. When you choose the path of belonging, you become one of our brothers and sisters. We are led by our fathers and mothers, who are in turn led by Grandmother Jessica, the Seattle family's matriarch. <laughs> Monster Cookie Man. Uh, you definitely feel like a grandmother without children. <laughs> uh, can I have a blank key card? She looks at you perplexed. I don't know why you would need one. There are They are only used to replace the cards of brothers and sisters who have damaged theirs. Did you know that there is a Maria Mercurial concert going on right outside? Her eyes light up. I know, isn't it exciting? I'm such a big fan of hers. The first time I heard Who Weeps for, Who Weeps for the Children, I melted inside. Don't tell anyone, but she's signing autographs outside right now. She chews her lip torn and makes a decision. I know the elders will frown on this, but I've just got to get her autograph. I mean, it's Maria Mercurial. <laughs> Next to the desk is a cardboard box filled with blank Universal Brotherhood ID cards. If you could get one and damage it, maybe you could use it to get into the office and program a new card. Take a blank key card. You slip a blank key card into your pocket. Take another blank key card. You already have one and there is a large stack in the box if you need another one. Sister Wilma? Ooh, members only. Let's talk to Sister Wilma. Hello, brother. What can I help you with? I have some questions. That's why we are here. What are your questions? Do you like it here? I love it being part of the Universal Brotherhood. Belonging helps everyone. We have a free soup kitchen that feeds hundreds of people every day. Educational talks in our auditorium and a counseling center to help prospective members with deep one-on-one -on -one therapy. Is there a computer terminal I could use? No, we believe it is important to remove mundane distractions from our daily life so we can focus on the truth. Our only computers are in the office, and that's off limits to the prospective members. Where is the counseling center? Just on the other side of the entrance lobby. Thanks, I'm going to look around. Truth makes us one. Brother Mike. 
Yeah, the infiltration parts in the Shadowrun games are great. Are great. Uh, Brother Mike. Brother Mike, I'm sorry, but today's seminar is over. Father Willie is just answering a few questions before he leaves. Is Lynn Telestrian here? No, Mother Lynn left about 15 minutes ago. Are Mother Lynn and Lynn Telestrian the same person? Yes, of course, but here at the Universal Brotherhood, we are all one family and refer to each other as brothers, sisters, mother, or father. Hey, Hatniks, welcome to the stream. How are you? Give our friend Hatniks a follow. He's an excellent streamer and a friend. Who is Father Willy? Father Willy is truly an, an inspiration. After years of living in the shadows, he found the light about three years ago and now is a beacon for us to follow here at the Universal Brotherhood. What did Father Willy talk about? It was an inspiring speech about how Universal Brotherhood is working to bring about a future of unity and belonging, order from chaos, a future of truth realized. It's a subject that he and Mother Lynn talk about often. Uh, where is Grandmother Jessica? I'm not privileged to know where Grandmother Jessica is, but Father Willie might. I'm done asking questions. Uh, Father Willie Hansen. Father Willie Hansen. Oh, look at this guy. Father Willie's greasy black hair and disturbing tattoos are quite the contrast to the flawless features and exquisite clothes of Lynn Telestrian. He doesn't look the part of a spokesman. You see the adulation in the eyes of those who linger around him just to bask in his presence a moment more. Apparently, he is a charismatic speaker. <laughs> Don't grab his willy. <laughs> Uh, welcome, my friend from the shadows. I rejoice to be with you. My past does not need to be my future. No, it doesn't. Perhaps you have already taken the first step, my friend. How may I assist you? I'm looking for Jessica Watts. May I ask what business you have with Grandmother Jessica? She's very busy. I'm working to solve her brother's murder. Grandmother Jessica has entered the inner sanctum and cannot be disturbed. I must tell you that the news of her brother's murder will not change anything for her. When we join the Universal Brotherhood, we put our birth families behind us and devote ourselves to belonging to something larger. I know that this seems heartless and it may be hard to understand, but if you speak with one of our counselors, it will all start to make sense. Is that all? I'd like to speak to Lynn Telestrian. Many are attracted to the bright light that is Lynn Telestrian, but she cannot see everyone. What business do you have with her? She's going to help me come out of the shadows and into the, into the, the light. Mother Lynn is a beacon that helps many come into the light of the Universal Brotherhood. Unfortunately, she left the building about 15 minutes ago. One of our counselors could help you to join our family should you, you should seek their counsel. Will that be all, my child? Thank you for your time, Father. Oh, here we go. Fulfill your purpose. No, let's talk to the janitor. As you approach the janitor, he looks up, seeming surprised that anyone noticed he was here. What do you want? I need a little information. I'm willing to pay for it. Okay, as long as I don't lose my job or anything. How much are you talking about? Don't know yet. Let's talk and then I'll pay you what it's worth. Oh yeah, like my grandpa used to say, the check's in the mail. Don't think so. Whatever happened to trust? Put some money up front or no deal. Let's throw with Charisma 6. I'm not exactly flush, so how about 50 now and 100 if I can use what you've said? 
Wow, you must be worse off than me. Okay, here my here's my cred stick. He hands you his cred stick and you transfer 100 new into it. Okay, what do you want to know? Have you seen Jessica Watts around today? Nope, but don't that don't mean much. Most of this place is off limits to me. I need a computer terminal. You know where one is? The only computers I've seen in the place are in the office section of the home behind the staff only doors. Tell me what areas of this place you have access to. I only have access to the public space which you are, we are in now. The storage room, locker room and the office. What do you know of the areas you don't have access to? The brothers and sisters live in what's called the home, which I've heard has the kitchen and dorm rooms. From there, I've been told there is a ton of security protecting what the freaks call the inner sanctum, but I've never seen any of that stuff. I'm, I want to get into the office. What will your keycard cost me? There is no way I'm giving you my keycard for you to cause trouble with. That sort of thing would come back to haunt me. Where can I get a different keycard? Sometimes staff leave keycards and uniforms in the locker room. Tell you what, for 300 new and I could let you into the storeroom you con which connects to the locker room and you could look around. Too rich, too rich for a fishing expedition. How about 150? Okay, but make it quick before someone looks over here and you... Uh, okay, we give him 150 new and he opens the door to the storeroom. I'm done asking questions. Uh, but first I want to look at this thing. The table is covered with snack foods. The warming stove could be used to warm up a plate of food, melting something, or maybe starting a fire. Melt the blank Universal Brotherhood ID card. You melt it, it's... You melt it in such that it obscures the lack of ID information, but it's still recognizable as a Universal Brotherhood key card. Walk away. Puzzles! There is a variety of sweets, including some red and blue candy. <laughs> That's a re is that a reference to the Matrix? She does. Does she have anything new to say? I haven't looked around this area. I've done bad things. Your past is irrelevant. It's your future that counts. Sister Nancy, welcome to the Universal Brotherhood. Brotherhood Counseling Center. What's your name? I'm a lost sheep who's coming looking for my flock. You've come to the right place. Tell me something about yourself so that I can pair you with the right counselor. I've lived in the shadows, so give me someone who understands the life of a runner. I know the perfect brother to speak with you. He has a similar background in talk shadow running. You two could get along fabulously, but he isn't in today and the rest of my counselors are currently booked. Could you come back tomorrow? Okay. All my possessions, they will be meaningless. Brother Christopher. I rejoice to be with you. How may I help you? Is this the office door? Yes, but it is off limits to the public. Thanks, I will keep looking around. I don't want to tell, talk to him yet about that. Uh... Okay. Tell me about the Inner Sanctum. It is a place of great meditation to which only our senior members, our mothers and fathers have access. Tell me about home section of the Universal Brotherhood. The home which is right behind these walls is where the new brothers and sisters live. Tell me about the sanctuary area. Behind the home is the sanctuary where our more senior brothers and sisters live. My UB home uh, access, access key card got ruined. Where do I get a new one? Sister Brenda can help with that. Last I saw, she was in front of the office door inside the counseling center.
Did I just pay that guy a lot of money for nothing? No, that's brother Christopher, sister Nancy. Where's sister Brenda? No, there's no sister Brenda here. This is supposed to be the counseling area. Let's take another blank key card. Yep. Nope, there's no sense to bring up. So we gotta go this way. The crate's label reads liquefied cane sugar, one gallon cans. 24 count. You see lots of these around on the shelves. What the hell are they doing with so much sugar? A box full of industrial toilet cleaner. Industrial? <laughs> the large tub is labeled cooking lard. The lid is extremely greasy. Take the lard. Mission item added tub of lard. The locker door is ajar. Search the locker. The locker has a well-worn uniform that would fit a dwarf. Inside the uniform's pocket is a key card. Take the key card. The key card has a big Universal Brotherhood logo and the name Edward Sharple, janitor. Walk away. The door to the locker has been ripped off. Search the locker. There are two uniforms crammed into the locker. Troll size, orc size. Locker door has tape over the latch to prevent it from locking. Search the locker. The, lo the locker. The locker contains neatly clipped articles in a uniform that will fit a human or an elf. Read the articles. The articles are about a variety of missing persons cases in which the missing person had become a member of the Universal Brotherhood. In the articles, a spokesperson for the Brotherhood says that these people are not missing. They have cut ties to the families who abused them as children. Take the standard size uniform. You put the janitor's coveralls over your clothes. Walk away. Okay, we look like a janitor now. Mm. Aha, we can go in here. Your comlink chirps and coyote appears on the screen. How's it going? Good. I find a way into I found a way into the off-limits area of the Brotherhood. Jessica's somewhere in here. You find another way in this place? Yep. I went down an alley and found a side door near the back. I'll send coordinates so you can find it. Can you open it yourself? Negative. It only opens from the inside. Okay, stay there. I want to have a look around. When I'm ready, I'll come open the door and let you in. No sweat, just open the door when you're ready. The cardboard box. Oh, I have a universal. And the music in this place is supposed to be relaxing, but it's genuinely creepy to me. The machine displays enter blank key card to activate machine. Place a blank key card into the printer. Universal Brotherhood Seattle Chapter. Wait. 
Oh, I have only four karma points. I don't think I can get decking six. Yeah, I can't. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the decking four option. Oh, that was Printer Universal Brotherhood Inner Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That's it. We're going with Printer Universal Brotherhood Home De Home Access Key Card. Okay. Warning: This key card provides access to a high security area. Approved uniforms are required in all high security areas. Take the Universal Brotherhood Home Access Key Card. Where do I get a uniform? I'm dressed like a janitor, aren't I? I'll take another blank key card. Just in case we have to print a new one for the other areas. Janitor uniforms. No, we got the jan no. This is only janitor uniforms, Sharian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, he doesn't have access to the home. Ooh, where he can check this. Take a bottle of chloroform. Ooh, the shipping pallet has six boxes with chloroform bottles in them. Chloroform could be used to knock someone out if you get them alone. Rejoice to be with you. How may I help you? Is this the office door? Yes, if you need to enter, you can use your janitor kicker to do so. I'm so glad I could help by just walking through these doors. You have taken the first steps along a path that will change you forever. So I don't get these guys alone. I can't save it. Ooh, what's here? The holographic map displays the Universal Brotherhood logo. Activate the hollow desk. The hollow desk animates to display a high level blueprint of the facility with labels to touch to zoom into each area. The public areas. Uh, the holodesk zooms in to show the entrance hall, auditorium, and cafeteria of the Universal Brotherhood Seattle chapter. The staff areas S displays the storeroom, staff, locker room, and kitchen with the notation that the kitchen is actually part of the home area from a security point of view. The staff areas, okay. The home areas. The holodesk zooms in to show the four dormitories, the office, and the kitchen area that make up the home area. You notice that the kitchen has an external door and that there is a heavy security around the door to the sanctuary area. Ooh, interesting, Sh uh, Sharian. Fun fact, Shadowrunners tend to try to keep their runs as non-lethal as possible. 
Most don't want to acquire a reputation as wet workers. It also means they avoid dangers to themselves. Dorm A, current residence. Are these Kickstarter backers? Dorm B, current residence. Dorm C, current residence. Dorm D, current residence. Zoom map out. The inner sanctum. Access denied, insufficient security clearance. Walk away. Uh. Ooh. You think those were just random names? Could be Kickstarter backers. This game was funded through Kickstarter. Um, Universal Brotherhood Terminal. Login, Sister Dawn Verse. Seattle Chapter Brothers and Sisters Database. Decking 4. Use decking skill to unlock admin functions. Authorize new key cards. View attendance logs. View correspondence logs. No, the top level. Uh, Alpha Sword Brothers and Sisters. Okay, more names. I don't want to, I don't know which card to authorize. What's this? The disc is covered in photos of dogs. The one catching a stick is labeled my diminutive friend. Well, I get, I, I get. Ross Bullock. Let's go with that one. SCA Streamers and greeting cards decorate the lower bunk. Uh, look at the cards. There are two greeting cards taped to the bunk. One is a giant homemade card. The other is professionally printed and features the logo of the, university, the Universal Brotherhood. Open the homemade card. Missing you already. Julie, we are also proud of you for advancing to the inner sanctum. Remember us, lowly brothers and sisters, and come visit us often. Love, Monica, and your fellow doormates. Open the professionally card, printed card, congratulations. Dear Sister Julie, it is my pleasure to invite you to join us in the inner sanctum as a mother of the Universal Brotherhood. I have left your upgraded key card in your locker. We rejoice to be with you. 
search the bunk. You find a fresh Universal Brotherhood Sisters uniform. Leave the uniform alone. The locker has a name tag on it, reading Sister Julie. Attempt to pick the lock. You quietly pick the lock. Opening the locker, you find an inner sanctum key card. Uh, yeah, but I'm not... I'm not a sister, so wouldn't that be obvious? On the lower bunk is a draft letter. Dear mom and dad, I write you every day, but I never hear back from you. Maybe what they're saying here is true. Maybe you never loved me at all. I think that this will be my last letter. Your ex-son ex Charles. Dude, they never got the letters. What are you talking about? Uh, a brother's uniform. Take the uniform. There we go. Found the uniform and the key card. Okay, that's a sister's uniform. In there, and I didn't need it. Box routing slip. Transfer for sale in thrift shops. Read the routing slip. Reason for transfer. Shane could not accept the truth and would no longer be needing these things. He has been moved downstairs. What? What's downstairs? Open the box. The box contains clothes and personal items, including a photo of Cherry Bomb. Digging deeper, you find... You confirm that they are the belongings of Brother Shane? Oh God, what'd they do to Shane? An industrial sized food processor that could make food for an army of babies. The fridge contains mostly things that are either brown or green, with the primary difference seem, seeming to be age. The broken vending machine seems like it could be moved. Spread large on the ground and push the vending machine out of the way. With some slight creaking, the vending machine slides away to reveal a secret door. Oh, what's that first? The coal storage box is leveled, labeled live specimen, keep refrigerated. What the hell are these guys doing in the kitchen? Yes, brother, what can I do for you? I'm new here, so tell me about your kitchen. The most important thing is don't touch anything, especially the damn alley door, the whole facility go goes into lockdown mode oh where does the door with the grate go to it opens to the alley outside do not open that door or the home damn facility goes into lockdown mode okay good to know where do the archers arch doors go to one goes to the cafeteria and the other goes to the home area and the heavily guarded door to the inner sanctum. Sister Sally at the front desk was asking for you? What does she want now? Lockdown sounds good, Monster Cookie Man? I don't think so. If I let my team in.
Uh, I don't know what to do. If I let my team in, we're going to lockdown and I'll have to essentially kill everybody. Aha! Can I... Nothing I can do to the computers. The wastebasket is filled with dozens of outgoing letters from new brothers and sisters to family members. The wastebasket basket is filled with shredded paper, which appears to have been letters. There are two letters which escape the shredder. Read the first letter. Dear Charles, we have been trying to reach you for months. We have come to the Universal Brotherhood several times and every time have been told that we could not see you. Since you are not allowed to go online in any way, the only way we can try to contact you is by letters, which have which we have done time and again with no response. How can you forget the people that raised you and loved you, mom and dad? He's not forgetting you guys. He's tr he was trying to reach you, but these guys won't let him. Read the second letter from the desk of Monica Sacknoff. Dear Brian, I want you to know how happy the Universal Brotherhood has made me, but I am sad that I never get any responses from my letters to you. I would email or message you, but as you know from my letters, we are not allowed to go online. You know that I have loved you since the day you were born. Mom and Dad always gave me crap for never being able to pronounce your name when you were a baby, but it's been an enduring name for me to call you ever since. Please reply to this letter. Love, Sister Monica. The wastebasket is stuffed with letters from people looking for missing loved ones who have disappeared after joining the Universal Brotherhood. Yeah, these guys are... Oh my god, what do I do? Do I go in by myself? Or do I take my team with me? Ah, decisions, decisions. <laughs> 